Hello, beautifuls, and welcome to another episode of The Gifted Table. I am your host, Dr. Melanie Harris, and thank you for pulling up your seat, taking a seat here at The Gifted Table, where today we're going to talk about money makers. The entrepreneur herself, the queen, is Mrs. Jasmine Robinson. Welcome to the table. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Now, I got to tell you all. So last week, you heard about Deidre Curry, another lady who I met, another queen I met at the special event I was invited to. Well, this is another queen who was there with her business, doing her thing. And when I say she was networking, you were networking Thank the system. You. I saw you out there Thank giving you. your cards out, letting people know who you are. So let the people know here at the table what it is that you do and how you are being your own money maker. Absolutely. Well, I wear a number of hats um, and in an entrepreneurial space, I am a coach and an author and I teach people how to remove the barriers to their weight loss journey through the lens of emotional intelligence. Um, there is a very, very big stigma towards weight loss. We don't talk about it enough. It's pretty taboo. And then there's also um, a worry about emotional eating that we don't talk about. And so I teach people how to identify those things um, and and conquer it, make sure there are no barriers to your journey. So uh, the name of my brand is Hella Keto LLC. Um, and how do you say that when you're when you talking to people? Though? Hella Keto. Yeah, you don't you be like Hella Keto. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for me, um, I thought I thought okay, a little bit. Yeah. It's okay. I thought a little bit about the title, and I wanted it to embody people who look and act like me. Yeah. I, I know that it's hard um, approaching these topics, mm -hmm. and. If, if it's easier to talk to me mm -hmm. if I'm using a dialect that you can understand. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I'm from Oakland, and that's what we say. Like, and I'm, I'm a hell of, you know, like I'm in every, like, facet of the lifestyle um and everybody knows it too mm -hmm. like if you know me people see keto stuff in the store and they're sending me photos of it like because mm -hmm. they know yeah. like i'm I, i'm really about that life mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. She's the so um <laughs> with that being said the name of the book is the same okay. it's hella keto and it's a workbook for folks who are hella determined and hella confused mm -hmm. um and that's my tagline um and i also offer consultation services on a one-on-one -on -one and group basis mm -hmm. so that is what i'm doing right now i have a lot of bigger ideas but that's what i'm that's what i'm nested in in this moment well see, i gotta be honest this is so being totally transparent i can't tell you how many times i've been on the phone with someone mm -hmm. or just sitting at home and they'll say what you doing i said oh i'm just emotionally eating mm -hmm. and i say it jokingly but you know they say there's always a little truth to some jokes mm -hmm. but really either i'm bored or i'm feeling a certain way mm -hmm. or something happened and i'm just snacking mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there and snacking so what even brought you to the foundation of saying, I'm going to not only connect weight loss, but connect it to emotional intelligence? Mm. That's huge. Well, people don't do that. It, right, right. They don't do that. So as I stated, I wear a number of hats. Okay. Um, one of those being I am an emotional intelligence consultant. I'm also a social worker by day. Okay. So I have a lot of tools in my tool bag. <laughs> um, and I myself have struggled with my weight for a very long time. I'd like to say I'm in a comfortable space now, but there's always room for improvement. And I'd like to get a little, you know, toner. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very comfortable where I am now. I, it took me to learn or to ask myself, why was I successful? Because it was such a challenge in the past. Where where was I at mentally now that I wasn't at 20 when I tried it, 25 when I tried it? Or what was it that was going on with me? And I, I identified what worked for me. I had a lot of folks reaching out and asking, how did you lose the weight? And I would give them the information. I found it online. It wasn't a secret. It wasn't anything that I was looking to sell. I didn't mind helping people and they weren't able to achieve it. And when I asked them what their barriers were, well, first, that's not a question that most people are prepared to respond to. Why are you all in my business? <laughs> It made them think. It made them think about these things. And I realized that it was a pattern. Folks were just not acknowledging when they were eating, why they were eating. It was always celebratory and grieving and this and that. And there's so many different emotions. Uh, but the reality is food is fuel. 
and you're using food for other reasons. Mm -hmm. The things that made me very successful, one was having a very strong support network and a support network that not only acknowledged what I was doing, but held me accountable, but that's because I allowed them to. People don't give their support permission to mm -hmm. hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And so then they don't say nothing to them. So you go down a slippery slope and we see you, but I don't want to get yelled at today. How did you even turn that into, how did you flip it? What was the motivation that made you say, you know what? I'm giving this information out. How can I make this into a business? What, mm -hmm. what made you flip the script there? So I was hitting roadblocks. I had had a number of uh, behavioral health concerns at one point. Um, and because of the field that I'm in, I was able to acknowledge it, um, but didn't know what to do with that. But someone encouraged me to do a cookbook. And that wasn't really my, mm -hmm. my lane. I wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. wanting to do that. But I'm like, hmm, what would be helpful for people to know? Right. So I started writing down the things that are helpful for okay. folks to know. And before you know it, I was like, okay, well, they need to talk back. So that's why it's a workbook. It asks you to ask yourself some tough questions before we even get into what is the ketogenic yeah. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about, are you ready to make a lifestyle change? Wow. Yeah, change because you can commit to 30 days, but right. can you commit to doing this like and not feeling like you're missing mm -hmm. out on anything? Mm -hmm. can, you miss, can you commit to being healthier daily? For the rest of your life, because that's something that you can do. Um, and so that's that's how it became a workbook. Um, and I, I felt like, but aside from eating and being active, there are so many other things that impact our ability to be physically healthy. Now, you talked about some of your clients. Have you been in a position to where you've had to fire some clients because they just do not want to be about that life? No, I haven't. I haven't had to fire anyone, so to speak. Um, I have had. Uh, one or two fall off and understanding that that's a part of the journey um, but also recognizing when you're not making the proper choices and make an adjustment right because what is it about you going outside what is it about you socializing that makes you feel like you don't have to respect your body your body or your boundaries mm -hmm. to fit what other people are doing what is it about you that like because I I present in a way where not only am this this is what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but everybody around me respects what I'm doing because of the way that I sit in it, right? So those are conversations folks don't necessarily want to have. Um, one or two folks have kind of like exited. Through. They're still there. Like I didn't kick them out, but they might have turned their notifications off. They ain't really responsive no more. Um, you know, missing our one-on-one -on -one calls. Um, and I, I get what you get. The thing is, like I said, the information is out there. Once you want to make a change, you know that I'm here to help you process that. But it's too many people out here paying me to talk to me. I'm not going to chase you down, ma'am, to help you get it together. No, no, no sorry. But, I, but I'm dedicated. I'm right. super dedicated to yeah. my clients. Um, and I've had some excellent results. If you care to learn about any yeah. of that, I've had some really good, really good results. Well, give us a quick rundown. What does being a part of your program, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. You mentioned 30 days, but what what is, how do you start it off? How do you orient or onboard people to the process for people who are like, okay, I'm hearing what you're saying, but give me a little bit more. First, the program in itself is four weeks. Um, I break down that workbook into four different sections from, from what's most important to what's least important. And um, we have a lot of discussion. I ask a lot about their experiences, their, their baseline knowledge. You know, um, I'm encouraging folks to take a real look in the mirror um, and document their journey. You cannot compare yourself to anyone else. You need to compare yourself to yourself. Can you, you find that with some of your clients mm -hmm. when you're having those conversations? Mm -hmm. and. In those conversations, who do you hear? What's the trend that you hear people most comparing themselves to? I would have to say it would be things like influencers, social media influencers. Um, I mean, but even even relatives or, or like folks who um, might say like they've always had a slow metabolism, but their sister is able to drop weight at the job. Well, you're not your sister. We need to identify your challenges so that we can eliminate those barriers. And the first thing that I have everyone do is record their weight and take a photo of themselves. Like it, it's not for me. It's not to share. It's so that you can see the progress when in that moment progress might be slow or stalled or you know like you need to be able to compare you to you and the only way to do that is to like get really get naked you know like and, and have that moment with yourself you can't hide from yourself the more we do that the less likely we're to change right that's good to know because you know we have all these things that 
are in our heads and in our space. Mm-hmm. So many things available to us online. Mm-hmm. And we do, we watch. We, you know, we're on social media, we're liking liking things, we're, you know, tagging and stuff and all these, but some we do look like that as a mirror so mm-hmm. oftentimes, as a reflection. Well, dang, why don't I look like? Why can't I have? Mm-hmm. What's taking me so long? Mm-hmm. This and the other. So how do you even keep motivated to keep encouraging others? What what is that process for you? As a coach, I try to monitor what I consume. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean food wise, I mean, like, you know, there's an algorithm, right? On Facebook and on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And the moment you talk to somebody about something or search something on a search engine, it pops up in your feed. Mm-hmm. So I'm consistently looking at things that, that, feed my brain well, just like I do with my body. Um, I'm in heavy conversation with my own business coach. And, you know, my father is a very successful entrepreneur. And I talk to him. He's uh, probably tired of me. But I got unlimited access to one of the greatest. <laughs> so, you know, um, I ask. Yeah. And I'm consistently trying to uh, manage myself, manage my emotions. And I use my hiccups or my, my backslides as teaching tools. Okay. So if I find myself consuming more alcohol than I know that I should because I've had a hard week Mm -hmm. and I'm giving myself excuses Mm -hmm. to act or, you know, behave poorly. I share that information and I share how I bounce back. I just have to be completely transparent with myself. That's transparency. Mm -hmm. And and what, what I I love about this platform allows women to do is four things. I I, I just want to focus on period when I'm having conversations with women and, and bringing them to the table, your passion, your position, your perseverance, and your purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're talking about right now, Mm -hmm. all of those things. And even within our purpose, we have those times of um, anxiety and insecurities that's weaved into the pattern of our journey. So I appreciate you and applaud you, sis, for being transparent and for sharing that here because knowing you have a coach is powerful. Mm -hmm. People don't realize the best Still need a coach, Mm -hmm. right? And her dad is awesome. You guys have to check Mm -hmm. him out as well. (laughs) We might have him on here as well Mm -hmm. as a leading man. Mm Y'all get that later. But um, but yeah, so so that that is so empowering. So you're you so you have your book and you have your your keto journey that you're helping people with. What for you has been the most impactful experience you've had through this journey and with your clients? For me, it's been the feedback. So I do what's called an exit interview. I like to know what works, what doesn't work, what I need to speak more about, like what, what needs more clarity for my next class. I want to keep getting better. And the only way to do that is to receive information from folks that have received information from me. And when they are telling me that I've now ignited, you know, this fire in them and they're ready to keep going. I ask them, I say, so do you think that you'll be able to continue to eat, you know, in the kitchen class? And they're like, yes. Absolutely, like the the, the yes. passion that yes. they feel because it feels good to make a change mm-hmm. and see results. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things we do when we plant seeds, we don't get that instant gratification. So people will quit, walk away, mm-hmm. stop putting in the work. Mm-hmm. And with keto, I mean, mo- most folks decide to live this lifestyle, not because of the other things, because there's a lot of good things about mm-hmm. it, but they, because they need to lose a significant amount of weight. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, there's a big drop. Mm-hmm. And most folks see it. Most folks feel better, have more energy, have more mental clarity. And that feels good because that is a not instant, but a very rapid mm-hmm. result. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that is something that keeps you motivated. And knowing when you're not motivated and how to be, how to be consistent, mm-hmm. even when you're not motivated, yeah. is something that I really talk to my clients about heavily in week four. Um, that's what we talk about, keeping the momentum. So talk a little bit more now about the emotional intelligence piece. And what does emotional intelligence mean for you? Let's start there. Okay, so mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. it's the awareness mm-hmm. of how I'm feeling and what I do with that feeling. We all can have our feelings, but um, how we respond is is most important, and uh, most of the time it's 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 quicker than what we intend, right? We act quicker than we think, and so um, one of the things that I use often is a purposeful pause. Um, I need to stop and digest what's happening um, in any element, whether I'm at work or I'm with the clients or I'm with my kid, you know. Um, let me take a second before I say something I don't mean, before I do something I don't mean, because that's not reflective of how I feel. I'm just upset right now, mm-hmm. or I'm just stressed right now. Mm-hmm. Right? So um, knowing that emotional intelligence is extremely impactful in how I move throughout my days, 
and how I communicate with folks and how intentional I am about the words that I choose. Um, I use those elements to attack the problems that folks identify um, in their eating habits. Like if you know that your weakness is this, why do you keep putting yourself around it? And what what are some um, other options or substitutes that we can look into to make you, you know, to satisfy you without harming you i'm heavy on the, the boundaries and the respect like you set these boundaries so you should respect them these this is boundaries. your these are your boundaries right. this is your body your rules this like you only get one body mm-hmm. take care you owe yourself more so true how responsive are people to the notion of including emotional intelligence in their in their lifestyle journey when it comes to weight loss how 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 are they making that connection because a lot of people aren't familiar with emotional mm-hmm. intelligence and how not only our awareness for how we respond but knowing how other people may respond differently because of their own experience mm-hmm. so tell us about that connection that people make a lot i think i take a lot of people um by surprise, even though I tell you, like, I'm going to be removing your boundaries and that's going to require some conversation. Um, I think people still are kind of just shocked when I'm talking or when I'm asking them to identify certain support folks and, and what are you going to let them do and how are you going to hold yourself accountable and, you know, things like that. Like when I when I lean into the emotional intelligence part, people don't reject it. I haven't gotten any rejection, but it's like, huh, I didn't think about that. That's what I get a lot. That has been the changing factor for their ability to, like, they, they're they learning how they're talking to themselves they're learning what expectations are actually so like they're saying one thing but doing something different and really the actions aren't aligning right yeah i think it just opens up their mind a bit and i, I think that people are receptive to it and i've gotten a lot of kudos and a lot of like this is something that works and it works because she's having these difficult conversations that don't nobody want to have right i'm not here to judge right i'm here to let's talk it through because i've been there mm-hmm. and the difference between myself and other coaches other lifestyle coaches Coaches, um, is that they present, you know, and they might be fit and it's mm-hmm. intimidating to mm-hmm. have that conversation. Mm-hmm. I meet you where you are and I kind of try to bring you on over to this side, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, but I'm approachable, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm interpersonal, you know, so folks perceive that well. I totally agree. Y'all should have seen our networking. You, mm-hmm. were, you were talking and connecting and people were like, okay, tell me more, mm-hmm. tell me more. And, and just your, your own energy. And what it's so key about the emotional intelligence piece. I have to keep coming back that back mm-hmm. to that because it's all about self regulation, mm-hmm. right? It's all about self regulation, and so if you're guiding people, learning how to self regulate, then they're going to be able to catch themselves when they're crossing those boundaries mm-hmm. that they put up, you know, regarding either their eating or even their sleeping. Mm-hmm. Right? We talk about it. All of those things. We all talk about things. situational awareness. That mm-hmm. that's when I. So when I ask you, you know, what is it about certain, like socializing, mm-hmm. you know, that is triggers for you. Like, mm-hmm. we need to talk about where, when you're in certain situations, how you respond to things. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we absolutely talk about self-awareness and regulating that. Um, that That's what makes me different. That's what makes this so powerful because we're combining the two. Mm-hmm. We talk about emotional eating, and that's just one. That's just one top yeah. topic. Like yeah. that's one mm-hmm. of the things that I address. But it's it's so common mm-hmm. that it deserves conversation. I am so excited for what you are doing, and that you started with self first. Mm-hmm. You know, you started with self first, so that you have a testimony, mm-hmm. so that you have a real genuine, authentic way for connecting with people and even being an influencer for them. Who is that person for you? My dad. (laughs) My dad. My dad, yeah. He's always really advocated for my resilience. Um, He has always acknowledged that I... I'm resilient and I've gone through a lot and I always bounce back. The harder I fall, the harder I come back, you know, and if I am dedicated to something and I put my mind to something, um, which most entrepreneurs will say, right, I get it done. Mm -hmm. I make a decision and I get it done. I'm very intentional in that way. No matter what I decided to Mm -hmm. do, he would stand 110% behind me and I took a long time to decide what I wanted to do. And he was always for it. Whatever I decided to do, he was just like, let's do it. How can I help you? How can I be of service? That's a blessing. Yes. Because everybody does not have that. No, I'm wrong. He ain't got to do nothing for me. Right. You don't have to do nothing for me. He's still there for you. Mm -hmm. I love it. So you are truly a leader. How do you you bridge your 
professional leadership style mm-hmm. with running your business and being an entrepreneur? I feel like they're one and the same. The mm-hmm. things that work for me at work, um, like the transparency, mm-hmm. like the intentionality, like understanding what I don't know, because I, I have to be resourceful and I have to be honest about what it is that I don't know. I think that being the way that I am in my professional life mm-hmm. has aided me in being a business owner. Um, and I, I, I know what I don't know, so I go find out. You know, I have a business coach for that reason alone because he's helping develop my business. I love it. I love it. So if someone is looking for Hella Keto, mm-hmm. if they need to find a little bit more out, they're like, I am so interested. Where can they contact you? You can find me online at www.hellaketo.net. Um, also on Instagram as Hella, H E L L A Keto, K E T O, and the number is 98, Hella Keto 98, and Facebook as well. So I'm online, I have an online presence. I am starting my YouTube channel as well, which I'll be, I'll be giving out free information and, you know, give you a little taste of how I talk to folks and, and the things that we talk about because there's so many little topics. There's so many little things that we don't necessarily address from the forefront where we're talking about a physical health journey. Mm-hmm. But as I stated, more goes into you being, being able to sustain something than just what you eat and if you work out. Absolutely. They're important. Absolutely. They're so important, but it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing. And we're going to make sure that your links, your information is also on the getintotable.com. So make sure you go there to check out that. Now, looking back, we've learned so much. You've done so much. What would you tell yourself now to prepare where you are in your journey own the resilience that you claim to, to have mm-hmm. throughout your entire life there will be bumps and bruises there will be hiccups there will be times where you don't have the funding for certain things and it's it will all come to pass you just have to keep going you do not get to stop um th- this was not initially my dream but now it's my passion right and if you are so passionate about something you have to keep going and you have to read life into it i love that it wasn't my dream but now it's my passion. Now, looking ahead, mm-hmm. since you are looking to retire your employer mm-hmm. in the near future, mm-hmm. what is it that you want and what is it that you need? Funding. <laughs> um, I need I need clear-cut goals. Mm-hmm. And then I need to write those goals down mm-hmm. and make a plan and stick to the plan. Um the more I know, and once I set it, like set it in stone mm-hmm. and can start taking action on that plan, um, and I know where I'm going, right? Because right, right now it's just kind of like no end game, mm-hmm. um, just kind of helping folks as they come, um, trying to gain exposure. But like, what is it that I'm looking for for real so that I can like make the plan backwards? You know what I mean? Like start from that part and, and then dial back to where I'm at right now. Um, so just some some clarity about my direction and what it is that I'm working towards. Um, and I'm working with, with that element with my business coach. His name is Terry Griffin. He's amazing. And he probably is taking more clients. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so just, just really like clarifying what, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to achieve? How do you know when you become successful? What does that look like? Setting clear goals. Setting clear goals. So that's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. And what do you want? To be to be impactful, to, to make a change. Um, as I stated, these are challenging conversations, and I want us to not feel badly about having to have them. Mm-hmm. You know, if you suffer from depression, you don't really talk about it, mm-hmm. but you should. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you have challenges with the way that you see yourself in the mirror, you don't post photos and you don't, you know what I mean? Like, you don't like going shopping because you don't, you can't fit in. Like, you have these challenging conversations with yourself, mm-hmm. but it's hard, right? You don't have nobody to talk to because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's embarrassing or it's this or it's that you know you you have your own feelings towards it and I just want to be impactful I want to make sure that people know that it's okay and and it's a it's a change that can be made if you so choose Mm -hmm. so we are already making an impact my dear and you're going to start making more so you all have heard it here at the gifted table hella keto Mrs. Jasmine Robinson doing her thing. Make sure you follow her. Mm -hmm. Go online. Check her out. Again, the information will be um, in the description below as well as on the gifted table. Thank you so much for taking your seat here at the gifted table. Like this. Make sure you like this video and share it with someone who needs to hear from Miss Jasmine. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. subscribe, As I'm getting all twisted in the tongue right now. (laughs) 
<laughs> but until next time, guys, please remember, ladies, stay grounded, innovative, fierce, transparent every day. In other words, stay gifted. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>